Hello everyone, welcome back to the Magpie Channel TV. Now it's been a few days since I, I last did a video here on YouTube because if you had have seen the, the YouTube community post that I put out yesterday and if you follow us on, on social media would have seen that one of my mates unfortunately passed away on the weekend, Saturday morning. Michael Savage at 31 years old, mate of mine, used to work with him a few years ago, lovely lad, still talk to him now, was meant to go for a pint with him after a match day uh, not long ago. Fortunately, it was a massive key outside that boss. So we didn't get to have that paint, but um, we talked a lot and uh, he used to always comment on the videos as well, offering support. Really sound lad, heart of gold. But he unfortunately passed away on, on Saturday morning, spent his last night on Friday night uh, in his coma with his Newcastle top one, with his mum in hospital. Uh, thankfully, you know, Newcastle got a win that night, so I do believe that one was, that one was for him. And then he passed away on Saturday morning, so what we've been doing is uh, I set up a Just Given page, a fundraiser for Michelle, Michael's mother, to help with the funeral costs, and I'm blown away by the support. Uh, I really am. It's it's amazing. I didn't know how much to set as a target because I know a lot of people haven't got money at the minute. Do you know what I mean? A lot of people are saving back on food shops, on heating bills, on everything, um, because this country has just completely gone, gone to crap. But set the target of 500 pound i'd never set up a page before but to be fair just given great website very quick and easy to set set up a page we set the target of 500 pound and as of recording this video at what like 2 p.m on tuesday afternoon i set it up yesterday at about 4 4 30 over one and a half thousand pound raised for for michael and his mom so i'm buzzing with that i can't thank everyone enough for, for those who have donated um you know that's really going to help, help help his family out there um have a good send off have a good send off for michael so amazing stuff thanks very much for anyone that's donated or, or shared it or or anything um and i'll i'll keep the the page open if you know it'll be in a couple of weeks so i'll keep it open for for another week or so at least um the link is in, it'll be in the description if you want to donate but like i say, I, I know it's i know times are tough and all and, you know people haven't got a lot of money so don't feel like you have to of course you know what i mean it's, it's just one of those things but i'm, I'm really happy the amount that's been raised already and uh, really pleased for, for Michael and his family. Um, and I've been in touch with the club as well. <clears throat> the, the club have kindly said that they're going to uh, put something in the match day. Uh, I, the club have said that they're going to put something in the match day programme for him on the uh, Southampton game. So that's that's really good news um, because the next two match day programmes are full. So with Southampton on the 30th of April or whatever it is, they're going to have a, a piece about Michael in there. Just a, just a little bit of words from his mum and uh, a photo of him, which he'll be buzzing about. And what I'm trying to do as well is, is raise awareness for a, an applause in the 31st minute of the Mayan 80 game. So next Sunday at home at Manchester United, which would have been a day before Michael's birthday, would have turned 32 the day after. And the 31st minute, I want to try and get a round of applause at St. James Park, just as much as we can. Because Michael was a massive Toon fan. He tried to get the games when he wasn't at work. But he always watched them. He always kept an eye on them. He loved it. Um, had all the shirts and that, you know. He, he loved Newcastle. It was a big part of his life. And he, he used to always say to me, oh, well done, mate. It's amazing to see how well you're doing. And he loved how the club had sort of given me access um, and stuff like that. And he was just, he was he was proud of me. And he would have loved it, you know, knowing that there's people in the ground clapping for him, cheering for him. And that would have meant the world to me now, and uh, I'm sure you'll be watching the games from up there, and we'll be watching this video from up there, so rest in peace, Michael, mate. Right, then this video is just going to be uh, a bit of a Newcastle United news roundup, I suppose, because it is obviously the international break now. England play on Thursday night in Naples, and then Sunday at Wembley. I don't even know who we're playing on Sunday again. Is it? I can't even remember who we're playing. But obviously they've got two Euro qualifiers, got Italy on Thursday, and after that they're at home with someone on Sunday. I mean, I'm really not that bad. After after the World Cup, I've kind of just like it's Southgate and I'm just snooze gate and I've, I've had enough of the gates. You know what I mean? Close them gates, throw away the keys. I can't be asked. Obviously, when the Euros comes around, we'll watch that. We'll get up for that. We have for qualifying. <clears throat> Should do with that group. Obviously, that we're I think it's Macedonia and stuff that we're in the group with. But for me, like I've. I always like watching England, and loads of my mates aren't really that bothered about England until it gets to like a. A big game or, or the major tournaments whereas i used to like following them and I'd, I'd watch all the crappy friendlies you know the crappy friendlies um i'd watch the the montenegro ways and, and stuff like that and qualifiers i'd still watch them and i still enjoyed them ish but uh, 
I'm just, I'm just with the Southgate thing and how the World Cup ended. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not bothered. I'd rather just there was no international break. We just cracked on with the season. You know what I mean? Get it finished earlier. FA Cup final, third of June. What's all that about? You know what I mean? Then the season finishing late. Just get it over and done with. Enjoy with summers. But and you know, it, has it came at a bad time for Newcastle? On one hand, yes, because back to back wins. We're full of momentum now. Uh, you want to keep that keep that run going. I mean, there's nothing to say that it won't continue after after the international break. Obviously, the lads are setting off to Dubai this week as well for their warm weather training camp. A lot of the players are already on holiday. Bruno here enjoying his his uh, holiday in the Maldives with his missus. Bruno's magic hat. He loves it. Also, shout out to Bruno for World Down Syndrome Day today. He was at the foundation the other day for for this footage to come out today. Um, having a kick about with the lads and lasses there at. Newcastle United Foundation, absolutely love this, brilliant to see, brilliant from Bruno and the club, and uh, yeah, it's magnificent that, and it actually sums up Bruno as a character, doesn't it, and, and just how much he, he's grasped this city, gets it, enjoys it, loves the culture, loves the people and the fan base, so that was fantastic to see, uh, and yeah, you know, you've seen Botman yesterday was pictured training for Netherlands, there's the feature of the Holland defence there for me, the Dutch defender, finally getting his senior call up, he's there, Pope, for England has had to come back with a minor injury and um, we know Almiron hasn't travelled there's rumours now that Almiron's injury could be going from three weeks to six weeks out that would be absolutely lifting of course uh, hopefully that's not the case but then again Jacob Murphy has been doing fantastic on that right hand side the last couple of games but aye is it a bad thing let me know what you think in the comments that the international break has came um, I'd probably say yes but then again it allows these players like Almiron and Pope to shift off these England injuries come back fresher and I, I'm buzzing for that Man United game already next Sunday. Um, I think it's it's obviously a massive occasion, a massive game. Get our Carabao Cup revenge. But uh, we'll talk about that near the time next week. What I want to talk about this video, and the title of the video is, of course, about the Amazon documentary. Now, we've all been getting excited about the NU NUFC documentary to get access to the behind-the-scenes footage, to be that fly on the wall in the Newcastle United dressing room, in the training ground, see how it, how it works. You know, behind closed doors as much as you possibly can because you, we've seen the Arsenal one, unreal, watching them train in the rain to bloody you'll never walk alone and then going to Anfield and getting pumped. <laughs> you know what I mean? We've seen Arsenal's when they came to Newcastle and got pumped when we've seen the brilliant displays by War Flags. So I'm really looking forward to uh, this one. We've been talking about it, thinking about it. You know, players have been speaking about it recently. Gordon recently with Sky Sports was speaking about them. It's, we had them being there all the time. Eddie Howe's seen it. He's used to it now. But... It's not going to be like the Arsenal one, as we're all expecting. We knew it wasn't going to be called, I did a video on this, that it wasn't going to be called all or nothing. It wasn't going to be quite as long as that. I think this one's three or four parts in the Newcastle one, whereas the Arsenal one, the Spurs one, which was brilliant with Mourinho. Remember that scene with Mourinho and Deli Ali, Mourinho and Danny Rose. Fantastic. Obviously, we've seen clubs abroad do these documentaries as well. Dortmund have done one. City did one that was a bit crap. Um, just because it's City and it was born, winning all the time. But, you know, we've seen some some unreal ones. Um, and I was really excited for this Newcastle one until this news came out yesterday. And this is the Athletic that reporting this, that it's not going to be anything like those ones. It's not really going to be looking at the dressing rooms or anything like that that we're hoping for. It's going to be more focused on the ownership. Oh, just What's worse, watching England and the Southgate are having to deal with this this ownership stuff again. These questions about the ownership, you know, it's good that they're going to answer questions and be open and it's clever of them because it allows insight and it allows a lot of funding and revenue and again, that's what helps with FFP and stuff. But they're seeing here, The Athletic, that it's, it's not going to be focusing on Newcastle United, the football inside, it's more so going to be focused on the ownership model and the ownership side, which obviously isn't anywhere near as entertaining because who wants to hear about that apart from politicians you know what I mean not football fans we wanted a football documentary but I tell you what obviously I'll still be watching it I still love it and let's not hide away from it there is some certain questions from the Saudi Arabian ownership that are still going to linger and people want answers for and we're, we're kind of close close the door to it you know we have to be open about it and discuss it but again I just wanted the all and off them I just that's what I wanted we want to see the players more, get to know them more, get to know the coaching staff more, what's Tyndall having for his breakfast? Do you know what I mean? Those are the kind of things, those are the hard hitting answers that I wanted. I wanted how many sugars does Graham Jones have in his tea? I bet you it's fucking loads. I'm gonna say five, because he's always off his tits. Not literally, yeah, just on sugar. But I don't know, I just wanted to see ins and outs. 
ins and outs of the players. I wanted to see Julian on behind the scene having a laugh with Bruno. I wanted to see everything. You know what I mean? I wanted to see everything. But this is what they're saying. You know, cameras have been following Newcastle United this season, but do not expect an all or nothing style series. When the documentary is released this summer, so keep your eyes peeled for that Amazon Prime this summer. A joint production between 72 films and Lawton Entertainment, it is expected to be far punchier and hard hitting than some of the behind the scenes football productions today. So, more hard hitting. Sounds interesting, that makes it a bit more entertaining, punchier. Lawton Entertainment are the ones behind the new uh, hard-hitting Boris Becker documentary and the High Court trial between Colleen Rooney and Rebecca Vardy. Uh, while 72 Films is a series about Jimmy Savile. So, I guess it will be hard-hitting. The Newcastle Project will address the club's commercial setup rather than focus on the dressing room. And there is a desire to ask challenging questions, particularly about the relationship with majority owners, PIF, Saudi Arabia's public investment fund. So that's what they're going to focus on. Uh, the commercial setup more than the dressing room, which is strange. And I'm not sure this is entirely true, but obviously that's like no more. Me, they'll be speaking to people behind the scenes a lot more than I, I could. But um, I still would have thought there was a lot of player involvement going on because we've seen the Dan Bain dance. That was through Sky, but those cameras are already there, so they were allowed in. They've been in the dressing rooms, we know that, we know they've been behind the scenes, we know they've been at St. James' Park, they've been following people around. We've seen them with cameras at, against uh, Stavely and Gadassi at the game, watching their reaction to things. Um, so I would have thought that the players would still be heavily involved. Look, Anthony Gordon did that interview the other week on Sky, and he was saying, you know, it's it was weird that, that, that everywhere you go, you go down the training ground corridor, they're there. Eddie Howe was joking that they were in the toilets with him and stuff, or was that one of the players as well? You know, the players and the coaches have been talking about how they are everywhere. They can't go anywhere the last few months without a camera being in the face or cameras being there, microphones being there. So we will surely still get a lot of behind the scenes access and, and, and behind the scenes entertainment and being able to see things that you normally wouldn't, which is which is amazing, which is the best part about it. And I'm just interested to see what actually look what it looks like more so behind behind closed doors now, you know, how the training ground's getting on, the development there, seeing James Park, anything, people's offices, with it saying that, you know, that, uh, they're, they're doing the, the setup of the club commercially, obviously Darren Eels is likely to be involved there, you know, Silverstone and the likes of them, maybe we'll hear a lot more from them, we might find out how many triggers Darren Eels likes in his cup of coffee in the morning, but uh, yeah, I'm, I don't want it to just be all, all this Take over, take over, take over. I just wanted to be on the pitch, especially with the season we're having. Look, if we get top four, even if we're done, the Carabao Cup final stuff will be brilliant to see. Um, and then the top four stuff, or even if we just get European football, those will be amazing scenes. Hopefully, they, just, they, they do a series two and they follow us around Europe next year. That has got to happen. Saying it now, that has got to happen. Get that done. Sign to you and deliver on Amazon. Following Newcastle around Europe next year will be amazing. But yeah, let's let's wait and see what, what is, what's actually happening in it. I'm still looking forward to it. This might not be as exciting as everyone thought, and it isn't exactly the all or nothing style that we presumed it would be, considering that's what it was like with the likes of Spurs and Arsenal. But let us know what you think in the comments below about that. And the other mental bit of news to come out over the weekend was Jet Row Willems, the ex Newcastle United wing back, getting punched by his own fan. He has the footage here. Now, Willems, who's representing Groningen there in the Dutch league at the moment, they are really struggling. 17th in the league out of 18 teams, look like they're going to go down. They do have the seventh highest budget in that division, so that's why there's a lot of anger. And his own fan punched Willems at full time the other day in that game. I mean, how bonkers is that? What a, what a wanker. What an absolute wanker. And it, you know what I mean? Willems is such a sound bloke as well. You know what I mean? For it to happen to him. Why would you punch anyone though? Punch your own player. You're that angry, you're punching your own player. He comes over, oh my dears, man. It's, it's terrible to watch, to be fair. And it's, he runs away, apparently he got caught, he's getting banned and all that stuff, which is obviously the case. He's got to get banned, stadium banned, the lot, you know. And, and apparently they were saying in the Twitter thread that his dad ran on the pitch a minute before that. And they, they've had a couple of issues this season, going again with pitch invasions because of how poorly they've been playing. Yeah, I get it. We all get angry. God knows we got angry during the... Mike Ashley era and I'm a Claren and that one we're getting relegated and even under Bruce. You don't punch your own players though. How oh, are poor Jet Row. He's sure he's you know he's Ari though, you know, he's a hard bloke. But he doesn't deserve that and I thought that was just just mental. Especially in this day and age for that happened. Especially when he's went over to the fans and he's obviously trying to, you know, just have a bit of debate with them, console them, you know, apologise to them if you like and just say, you know, we're gonna graft whatever, but for him to jump over and punch them, what an also. Crazy stuff. 
I think that'll do for this video, to be fair. Um, went on quite a while, even though I've got bits to edit there, of course. Uh, but I just wanted to jump back on since I haven't been on for a few days. I kind of just wanted a, a break, to be honest, just clear my head a bit and uh, yeah, sort out this this fundraiser stuff for Michael and, he, and his mum. So I'm pleased we can do that. I'm over the moon with the amount that's been raised. Uh, and thanks again. Just want to finish off the video saying thanks again for everyone that's donated. It means a lot. And for all the kind messages, uh, put it on the community post yesterday on YouTube. Loads of nice messages on their replies. Um, I put it on social media as, as well and lots of love there from the Toon Army, as you'd expect, you know, the best fans in the world, best people in the world from Newcastle, so link is still available in the description for, for Michael's just given, but like I say, the, the amount we've raised already is, is amazing, so thanks again, cheers for watching, I'll see you on the next one.